What's up, Wealth Builders? Ryan Pineda here, back at you with another masterclass. And today, we're going over how to scale any type of business. You don't know who I am. I have flipped hundreds and hundreds of homes. We own hundreds of rental properties. And I've scaled and started multiple businesses to seven and eight figures. And this process I'm gonna show you is everything I have learned along the way, no matter what industry you're in, this will work. This is the first time I'm ever revealing this training on YouTube. I've done it one other time in a private group and everyone loved it. They went crazy for it. And so I said, you know what? I gotta put this on YouTube because people need to know this information. So that being said, let's hop into it. What does it take to scale a business? Well, there's really five steps when it comes to scaling. The first step is the offer, okay? This is gonna be your product or service. Everything starts with the offer. If your product or service or the thing that you're trying to sell sucks, it doesn't matter how good the rest of the stuff I'm gonna tell you is, everything begins with the offer. We're gonna talk about how to make great offers at that. Second is marketing. So we need to go over how are you gonna do your marketing? If you have a great offer, you have a great product, you have a great service, how do you get people aware of it? The next one is gonna be sales. Okay, people are aware of it, you're generating leads. Now what? How do you get people to buy the thing? They're aware of it, they see it, how do you get them to buy? Fourth, we're gonna go over operations. Now that people have bought the thing from you, how exactly are they gonna get fulfillment out of it? How exactly are you going to serve the customer or the client? How are you gonna maintain that relationship and give them exactly what they wanted? And lastly, finance. At the end of the day, are you actually making money with this thing? You're gonna go through all of these iterations of building this business, building this product, building this offer, and if it doesn't make any money when it's all said and done, then what are you gonna do? How are you gonna reiterate it? This is exactly how you're supposed to build any kind of business or any kind of new product within your business, and guess what? This is literally always happening. I'm always creating new offers and new businesses. I'm then trying to figure out how do I market this new offer to the public? Then I'm deciding, okay, we got these leads. How are we selling it? What kind of scripts? How do we do this? Then once we start getting sales, okay, how do we make sure we're fulfilling on what we're selling? And then lastly, did it make any money? And guess what? If it made good money, then I'm gonna go back to the top and say, okay, let's market more. Let's get more people through the door. This is going great. Or Maybe it didn't make the money we wanted. Maybe the margins weren't as good as we thought. And we got to say, hey, how do we reinvent the offer? How do we lower our marketing spend? How do we figure out how to make sales more effective and convert better? It's basically this ongoing thing that just keeps happening. And that is business in a nutshell. So the question becomes, how do you do all these things at a really high level? Well, that's what we're going to learn about today. So First thing, let's talk about the offer. What are some things you need to know about when you're creating an offer? Well, for one, this to me is the most important thing when it comes to making an offer. Profitability, okay? If the offer is not gonna be profitable, then it's not gonna make sense. You could have the best offer in the world, but if you are not profitable with it, it makes no sense. For example, if I was to say, hey, I'm gonna go do one-on-one -on -one coaching for a dollar, I bet a bunch of you guys, probably everyone here, would go take the one-on-one -on -one coaching for a dollar. Let me know in the comments if you're like, hey, Ryan, I'll take you up on that offer, right? Well, it's not gonna really be profitable because I can't work for a dollar and you know service all these different people, right? And if that wasn't good enough, what if I was like, hey, well, you know what? I'll coach you one-on-one -on -one for a dollar. I'm also gonna give you um, the keys to my Hummer so you get that, <laughs> you know, no matter what. I'm also gonna let you stay at my house so you can go stay there, you don't gotta pay anything, just pay the dollar, you know, you get all of it uh, included for a dollar. Well, clearly, it's not gonna be that profitable. So we gotta make sure that whatever we're selling has enough margin to cover all the other expenses to service the product and still make a profit at the end of the day. And I'll go over that, you know, as we continue to go through this, but profitability to me is the number one thing. The next thing, is scalability. So with scalability, one-on-one -on -one is not going to work, right? Even if I was able to offer it for a good price that made sense for me profitability-wise, I'm not gonna be able to scale it because I only have so many hours in a day to do one-on-one. -on -one. If I just told you, hey, you know, we're gonna do one hour a month or one hour a week on our meetings, how many people could I realistically do? I mean, maybe 50? Max, like if I, if I did it 50 hours a week at 50 people, I could have 50 clients in one-on-one. -on -one. That is the max scalability if I was to do a one-on-one -on -one offer. But here's the thing, 
you know, we got group coaching programs. Group coaching is great because I can go do, you know, one message to infinite amounts of people. That's what makes YouTube great. Right now, there's going to be thousands of people who watch this video and I only got to film it, you know, for however long it takes for the hour. And I get mass scalability. Literally, there's no limit. If it went viral, which would be amazing, and it got millions and millions of views, it's still the same amount of work for me. It's infinitely scalable. And so, you know, if you're gonna create a product, think about the scalability. Now, here's the thing I wanna tell you. It doesn't need to be scalable off the bat. Like, if you're just getting started, you wanna be a consultant, it's okay to do one-on-one -on -one starting out. But just know, eventually, as time goes on, you're gonna have to transition to a more scalable model. The third one is, understand the market. So what is the market saying that your service, your product, everything is worth? You know, in this example of one-on-one, -on -one, back to it, what is it worth? Well, you know, people pay one-on-one -on -one for different things based on your skill level. You know, I know Warren Buffett, he auctions off one lunch every year and people pay millions of dollars to have the one lunch with Warren Buffett. That's what he is worth. That's what one lunch with Warren is worth. I do a random golf with me day that people pay over $10,000 for. We go golf together. We go talk about their business. We hang out. We build a relationship. I've had many, many people buy that offer. So what is the market for whatever it is you're selling? You know, we sell event tickets. We sell education. Oh, if I'm making offers on houses for my real estate business, you know, what, what, what's the market value of the home and what I need to offer to be competitive? So you got to understand the market that you're in and what kind of price you can demand based on your skill level, your track record, and the value of your offer. But you got to understand it. The fourth is purpose. You need to understand what is the purpose behind why you're creating this offer. Business is hard, guys. It does not matter how long you've been in it. It still is always hard. And so... The way you get past the hard moments, you know, people talking crap about you, you know, losing money on a deal, um, having to fire people, having to get betrayed. How do you get past all of that stuff? Well, your purpose better be really big for why you're doing this. If it's simply about making money, you know, there will come a point where you make enough money and you're like, dude, I'm good. And you'll no longer continue to work hard. You'll just kind of maintain. So if you have a big purpose, that will push you through the hard times. Now, here's the thing for me. If I can build a business that fulfills me and can make me a lot of money, profitability, and is scalable, and I know there's a good market for it, and I'm, I'm competitive uh, you know, for what I'm doing, and it has purpose, well, dude, I'm gonna win. That's all that matters. You know, I'll give you an example, YouTube, which is basically education. You know, we're in the education business. Our education company does over eight figures a year. And I love it because of purpose. At the end of the day, I love doing these videos. I love helping people. I love throwing events. We've hold an event every quarter called WealthCon, over a thousand people. Nobody else is doing that every quarter with over a thousand people. It's really hard to do, but we do it because I love the purpose side of it. We hold, um, you know, we bring the best speakers in the world, top entrepreneurs. I've had pretty much every big name you can imagine speak at the events. And then we hold a church service. We have worship songs. We have a pastor speak. I speak like it's a totally different kind of event. And it's purely because of purpose. Now, here's the thing. That's, that's, you know, a once in a blue, well, not once in a blue moon, but that's a rare business where you could build one that is profitable, is scalable, you know, you're good, you, the market's great, and then you get to build your purpose. My other business, flipping houses and wholesaling, it's not that purposeful. I mean, at the end of the day, do I like real estate? Of course, it's what got me to where I'm at today. But do I get fulfillment out of flipping houses anymore? Not really, but I do like the result that house flipping gives me. And so at the end of the day, if I'm getting the results that I want, then it's fulfilling me as a byproduct, if that makes sense, right? If house flipping makes me the money I wanna make, it helps me employ people, and then with that money, I'm able to go and do the things I wanna do that are important to me, then it's fulfilled the purpose. So you don't have to have the actual business fulfill your purpose, but you do need a reason for the business that's gonna push you through the tough times, all right? Now, these are the components that make up an offer. Once you've kind of dialed in, hey, here's what I'm gonna do. Like, I'm gonna become a house slipper. Well, what's your offer? Well, your, your offer is based on being cash, being convenient, being quick close, all that good stuff. You don't need a realtor, all right? If you're in education or if you're in service-based company, hey, 
you know, our offer is this, we're competitive with the market, it's scalable, we know that our costs are good, it's gonna be profitable, and we enjoy doing it. These are all important for determining the product. Now, once you have the product, how do you make the offer so good um, and so irresistible and it makes people wanna buy it without you even having to sell them or market it? The offer is just that good. Well, I think there's a few different keys that come into play in making offers really good, okay? Um, one is that people think about is price. So I used the drastic example earlier and I said, what if uh, I offered you one-on-one -on -one for a dollar? <laughs> like, it's like, well, price alone, people will buy it. They're just like, well, dude, it's only a dollar. Like, cool, let's do it. Um, but price is one way to get people to buy your thing. Now, <laughs> are you gonna be profitable? If you have a low price, that's the question you gotta answer. I'll tell you, this is why software and everything is worth so much because Think about a thing like Netflix, you know, for 20 bucks a month, it's very cheap, the price is low, and you get access to literally thousands of TV shows and movies and everything else. The, like, everything about the price for what you get is crazy. And that comes back down to another aspect of great offers, is just the value. You know, what is the value to price ratio? With Netflix, it's hard to say what the value is of having access to all those movies. You can make the argument that, hey, if I were to buy every single one of those movies and shows, it would cost me I don't know, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars, and I get it for 20 bucks. So clearly, the value far exceeds the price. And so if you can make the value far exceed the price, you're gonna win, it's gonna be easy to sell. Another thing that allows for an offer to become great is the time. So how quickly do you actually get the product? I mean, the moment you sign up for Netflix, you get it immediately, and so, Netflix is an easy sell. You immediately get access to thousands of movies and TV shows right now. You know, I was using Tesla as an example earlier when I was doing this training, but it's like, man, dude, for a Tesla, think about the price. You know, uh, their normal car, the, the Model Y is like 50K. Compared to other 50K cars, the value is so much greater with a Tesla. I don't care what you think about the looks, but on a pure spec basis, nobody can compete with a Tesla at that price. It's faster, right? Like the Model Y goes like zero to 60 in three and a half seconds. The technology is better. It drives itself, you know? It doesn't have any maintenance. It's electric, it's cheaper to maintain. Everything about it value-wise is significantly better and it has over-the-air updates that make it better as time goes on. So clearly, you know, the value is there and that's why Tesla has become the most valuable car company in the world because their prices are good and the value far exceeds the price and relative to their market, they blow their market out of the water, all right? And then time. You know, you can get a Tesla right now. It's very simple to get. You just go on the website and buy it. And that leads to another one, which is ease. Like how easy is your product to use? You know, think about this. If we're talking about getting fit, all right? Well, getting fit requires you to diet, work out, you know, get on these programs, have accountability, train, there's a lot that takes to get fit. It's not easy to do, but you wanna know why people like steroids and liposuction and you know surgeries and stuff? It's because it's easy. Like you could go drop your fat today, tomorrow, very quickly, time, by doing any of these different things, right? So ease determines why people buy. So these are just some variables about how you can make your offer very appealing. You can make it price appealing, you can make the value far exceed the price. You know, you can make it very instant. You can make it very easy to use. They all play a role in creating a great offer or a great business. Now, here's the thing. Um, for me, up to this point in the education space, we've built to an eight-figure company with only high-ticket offers, meaning everything we've sold up, up until recently was over $5,000. That was the minimum coaching program we had. You know, we have events where you can come for a thousand bucks, but overall, it's a very high price. Now, here's the thing. Maybe the price isn't that attractive, but the value is, you know, if I could teach you how to scale a business like I am now, it could make you millions of dollars. If I teach you how to flip one house, it can make you 20, 30, $40,000. So even for $5,000, the value is clearly there. One of the problems with real estate is time. It takes time to get a good deal. It takes time to build a business. And then ease, it's not easy, right? Like at the end of the day, it is not easy to do. Um, it's easy to get in our program, we can control that, but it's not easy to go out and execute. 
no matter how much we help you, they're still gonna require effort from you. If there was an easy button where you could just pay money and make money, well, then everyone would do it, right? And, you know, at the end of the day, uh, these are some components you need to do. But for us, you know, just to give you an example for this presentation, we actually just launched what I believe is our best offer ever. Wealth Builders, I'm so excited to announce the launch of Wealthy University. This is literally the best deal we've ever created. Imagine if you got calls with me and my team every single week where you can ask Q&A and get up-to-date information on what's working in my business and for other experts in the world. On top of that, what if you got access to all of our courses? And what if you got access to exclusive softwares like our CRMs in our community to go and do deals and make relationships well, if that sounds like something you want to be a part of, it's only $97 a month. I'm not kidding you. If you've joined any of our other programs, you know they're a lot more expensive than that. So to get access to our community for only $97 a month is absolutely insane, and it's so easy to sign up. All you got to do is go to WealthyUniversity.com, and you could sign up today and get instant access to those calls exclusive content like our WealthCon recordings or our workshop recordings and so many other things in the community. So go check out Wealthy University today and get signed up. This is the best offer we've ever had, period, because you get access to many of the things that have cost thousands of dollars for an insane price, okay? So here's what you get. You get one call a week with me or my team. You're able to ask questions in a group setting. All right, so it's scalable, right? We can have as many people as we want on it and it works great, people love it. Two, you also get one course. So we have six different courses right now. We got real estate courses on flipping, on rental properties, on Airbnb. We got business courses talking about the things we're talking about right now. We got content creation courses. So we've got a bunch of courses, any of which we sold for a thousand bucks on their own, you could pick from. Um, you get access to our community, once again, you would have had to pay five grand plus to be in the community. You also get um, access to our softwares. So our softwares, like our CRM and Wealthy Deals software to find great deals have only been available to our community, okay? So you'll get access to that. And you're gonna get access to you know, special content and recordings. So people have always asked me, Ryan, do you have any recordings of WealthCon and all the speakers? Do you have any recordings of the workshops that you guys do? And we don't ever sell them but now we're gonna place them in here at Wealthy University. So clearly there's a lot of stuff um, that you get. One call a week, one course, all that good stuff. And the best part about this is it's only 97 bucks a month. That's it, 97 bucks a month to get such value that we would charge thousands and thousands of dollars for. People have been paying it for years. And so for me, I thought about literally wealthy university from this standpoint. And I'll just walk you through as a real life example, okay? I'll get into profitability in a minute, but I'm like, all right, scalability. It's very scalable. We can sell infinite amounts of these, all right? Cool, it's digital. Um, market, I mean, I know the market. I've sold eight figures every year. Like, I know exactly people pay 5,000, 10,000, 30,000. So 97 bucks a month, <laughs> It, it blows the market out of the water, even my own market. I might cannibalize myself, but it's all good. Um, Purpose-wise, obviously purpose is there. Profitability-wise, let's talk about that. You know, at 97 bucks a month, how am I gonna make money? Well, number one, I mean, I'll talk about the marketing and how those costs are gonna play out for this, but profitability-wise, if I signed up 1,000 people a month, okay, which I think is actually very easy and doable with different marketing we're gonna do, which I'll tell you about, but 1,000 people a month at 97 bucks is basically 100K per month. So that's only the first month, you know? So if I do that in the first month, that's 100K. Then I do it again in the next month. Well, now I'm at 200K. Then the next month, that's 300K. And you start to see how this thing becomes really big really quickly if we just do a good job and we keep people in the thing. So for me, I'm like, look, I got to make Wealthy University the best value ever at 97 bucks that it just blows other programs away, you know, that are charging thousands that you would never want to quit because we're going to keep adding new call. We're going to keep adding new softwares. We're going to keep adding new recordings and special trainings and guests and, um, you know, new courses available that you can get. So, you know, in the end, you know, profitability wise, 
It will be great on a recurring level as time goes on. But also, too, we'll talk about this in the finance side. You know, we have what's called lifetime value. If you pay $97 and you get blown away with value, odds are you're going to buy something else. That's just the facts, right? You think about Apple. Okay, do you have, for all you Apple people, do you have just one iPhone that's all you've ever bought from them? No way. If you're like me, I got the iPhone 15 now. I've probably had almost every iPhone version, <laughs> you know, before that. I've had lots of MacBooks. I have iMacs. I have iPads. I have AirPods. I mean, dude, Apple's gotten me for at least 20 products. At least. Uh, we, and I forgot, we bought all of our office employees all these Macs and different things. So like, Apple's for sure gotten me for at least uh, 50 purchases over the years. And the average purchase is probably... I don't know, uh, let's just say a thousand. I have no, it's probably more, but I mean, Apple's gotten me for 50K and I'm gonna keep buying Apple as the years goes on. So my lifetime value to them is at least 50K. I'd be really curious what their lifetime value numbers are for just all their customers because mine's really high and I would have guessed lots of people are really high for them. So think about it. You know, when we get into the marketing section, they could spend a lot of money to go get you to buy one Apple product because the moment you buy one and you love it, you get hooked and you buy more. And so that's really my premise with this $97 option is that, you know what, test us out. I understand not wanting to pay five grand or 10 grand right out the gate. You, I'm just some guy on YouTube, but this is such low risk to test us out that, all right, I'll test it out for a month. If I don't like it, I'll quit. There's no, you know, you know you're not locking in for 12 months. If you don't like it, quit. It's all good, you can, or you can cancel. But I'm so confident that we're going to deliver way more than $97 of value that you're not going to want to cancel. So right here, when I look at these, it's like, all right, well, the price is really cheap relative to other education. Um, the value is tremendous for $97. Bucks. I would usually charge ten dollars or more for things like this. Um, the time, you get it instantaneously. And then the ease, you just get it all instant. You go to Wealthy University right now, you'll get it right now. Okay. And so that's my thesis. People are going to end up doing all of that as time goes on. And then we have an even better option, which I'm not going to get into here, but you know, after you buy it for 97, they'll ask you if you want to pay for a year up front and you'll be able to get access to every one of our courses. You'll be able to get access to, or we'll give you a free ticket to WealthCon, which is a thousand bucks on its own. And then you'll get a discount for the year. And um, overall it's like 997. So almost a thousand dollars and you get like $9,000 worth of stuff between the courses, the WealthCon ticket, and a year of Wealthy U. So I literally just made that offer. I think it's our best value offer ever. We will sell the most of it more than anything I've ever sold. So I'm really excited about it, and it plays really well for everything we're doing. So anyways, that's the offer side of things. Now, let's talk about marketing. I'm kind of breaking the fourth wall too, because like I'm just telling you my business model behind it. But I think, what does Deadpool do that in movies? Like, that's the whole point of this. Like, I'm just going to tell you, like, I am selling you, no doubt, but you're going to be able to learn from it from this whole presentation. Now, first thing we got to talk about marketing. All right, I'm just going to use Wealthy You as the example. So we have Wealthy You. How am I going to get it out there? Well, first thing I'm going to do is think about my avatar. Who is the person that would want to buy this? Well, I can tell you the person who'd want to buy this is probably like an entrepreneur. They're probably you know, tired of a nine to five if they are working that. Um, and I, I should put an X. They don't want a nine to five. They want to figure out how to be an entrepreneur. They're probably on social media because that's where I'm on. That's how you're seeing this video right now. I can tell you my demographics are people who are 18 to 45. That is over two thirds of the people that watch me. And I think about 70% are men. You know, and then as far as race and nationality goes, it is really a mixed bag. I mean, like if you ever come to WealthCon, you will see white people, black people, Asians, Latinos. We got every kind of demographic you can imagine. And so I think a lot of that has to do with obviously how I look. I'm half white and half Filipino. And so that just kind of attracts, you know, a mix of everything. So I understand who the avatar is. Once I understand who would buy this product, I then need to figure out what is the method for reaching them. So there's lots of ways to reach people in marketing, okay? One way is right now is social media. I'm making social media right now. This video right now, I don't know how many people are gonna buy Wealthy University from this video alone, 
but a lot will. I can guarantee it, okay? Let me know in the comments if you're one of those people that ended up buying it because you saw this video. That way other people can just see like, oh yeah, like that's crazy that this video right here was the thing he was talking about and you bought because of it. It's like the fifth wall maybe. But um, <laughs> you have the social media element of things. We could do uh, Facebook ads. I'm definitely gonna run Facebook ads for this. YouTube ads, Facebook ads, social media ads in general. So I'm counting social media as organic like this video and then we'll run ads for the other video. Um, you know, next thing would be, you know, this is what I was doing back in a lot of different industries, especially real estate, but like cold calls and texting. So we would always cold call people, we would text them, everything else. I don't think that's great for this particular offer. It is great in my real estate business, but you know, those are some options. We could do pay per click slash SEO. You know, that's basically turning up at the top page of Google. You know, we could do TV commercials. I spent millions of dollars running TV commercials for my real estate business. You could do like billboards, radio, mail. These are kind of some old school methods. You know, you get the point though. There's lots of ways to do marketing. You gotta choose the method that's gonna get the avatar that you are looking for. You know, you could also do affiliate marketing. So one thing I'm gonna do with Wealthy You is I'm gonna say, hey guys, you wanna build some passive income? You can affiliate Wealthy You and get 20% of all the recurring revenue that you know, anyone who signs up under you gets. Like that's one element to it that we're adding. And it's like, all right, cool. We're gonna go get affiliates from people who are already in the program. We have affiliates who make six figures or multiple six figures right now, even before Wealthy You, because they've affiliated our other stuff. So affiliates are great. But overall, if I had to look at, hey, how am I gonna go attack selling this particular offer with Wealthy You? I'm gonna do social media, I'm gonna do Facebook ads, I'm gonna do affiliates, and that's about it. I'm just gonna go with those. You don't need to do everything. You can probably just get away with one thing. But that's how I am going to get people aware of the product. The last thing I wanna just talk about with marketing too, since we're on the topic, is landing pages. Landing pages are really important. Um, for me, the simpler the better, right? At the end of the day, whatever the one thing you want them to do is, just do the one thing. If the one thing is book a call with you, then have everything on your landing page point to book a call. If in this case, we just want them to buy Wealthy You at 97 bucks, have everything on that page point to buying the thing for 97 bucks. If you're in a real estate business and you want people to, you know, you want people to submit their home addresses so you can make them a cash offer or tell them what their home is worth if you're a realtor, we'll have the one thing point to that. Don't have five call to actions like, well, hey guys, um, you could buy this or this or this, or you can work with me in this way. It's confusing. Have all your landing pages point towards one thing. Now, here's the cool thing about marketing and everything in general today. For our students, I mentioned it earlier as part of the offer, you know, we're, we're coming out with our CRM. It's a custom white label CRM, right? And it's everything that I currently use in my business. So I have a CRM for my real estate business because the way we talk to sellers and handle those leads is different than how we handle leads in, you know, I'll just call it a normal business, right? An everyday business where you're selling products and services and everything else. And in our CRM, we have automations, we have text messaging, calls, um, pipelines, all these things that are needed. And with our CRM, you can actually create the landing pages within it, like super simple. So if you go to wealthyuniversity.com, you will see the landing page, okay? It's gonna be very simple and it has, like we made it in our CRM, like very easily. The way technology is today is crazy. Like, dude, our CRM, this also is 97 bucks a month. So you can see I'm like kind of going for this recurring thing. But for 97 bucks a month, to be able to make landing pages, to be able to text leads, call leads, email leads. You could even link your Instagram to it and DM leads um, to have all your automations in it, to be able to track your ad spend in it. It's insane what you can now do for 97 bucks. All of these things back in the day, even a couple of years ago, you would have had to buy different softwares. Truly, like I know because I had HubSpot. Okay, if you guys know what HubSpot is, it's like the most expensive CRM. I had Salesforce as well. Dude, I was paying 10 grand a month on HubSpot. And 
I still didn't have everything we needed. We needed active campaign for email. We needed, you know, a diff mini chat for my Instagram. We needed something for, I think we were using ClickFunnels for our landing pages. It was a mess, dude, having all this different stuff. Now, literally everything is on our CRM for 97 bucks. It's crazy, okay? So you'll be able to get that here once you join Wealthy University and add that on. So marketing is pretty much, this is everything you need to know in a nutshell. Now, sales. Once you have leads coming in, how do you sell them? Well, a couple of things to know. Number one, is what you're selling high ticket or is it low ticket? Here's how I define it. Many people would say high ticket versus low ticket in different ways. To me, high ticket is anything that's, you know, basically over $1,000. That's high ticket to me. Anything below a thousand bucks is low ticket. This is important to know because with high ticket, you are gonna need salespeople. People don't just buy $5,000 things with the click of a button. Some people do, but very few, all right? So, you know, if you've got a product or a service, if you're in the coaching business and you're selling $10,000 coaching, well, you're gonna need closers. You're gonna need salespeople. I'll get into, you know, different types of salespeople here in a minute. But if you're selling low ticket, for example, Wealthy you, 97 bucks, I don't need you to call in to buy it. If you're not convinced to buy it now, a salesperson's not gonna convince you anyway. Like you're probably just not the type of person that's ever gonna buy it. Like, and if you do have to be like wrestled into buying it from a salesperson, well, number one, the salesperson's not gonna make much commission on a $97 sale. And number two, I mean, honestly, you're probably not gonna be somebody who lasts very long anyway. Because if it was that hard to wrangle 97, you know, the next month, you're probably gonna be looking at it like, ah, I don't know. You're gonna basically have to be sold again. That's why I wouldn't even recommend trying to get salespeople to sell them something cheap. Like let people self-select into something low ticket. Now, if you're gonna do that now, how exactly do you do it? Well, you know, we basically have two types of salespeople, right? They're setters and closers. So your closers are your people who are your best salespeople. The setters are the people who are not, all right? Now imagine if you're doing a great job of marketing and you're getting 100 leads a day. If I'm the closer, me, Ryan, I don't have time to talk to 100 leads every day. What I really want, if I'm an experienced closer, is for somebody else to filter through those leads and to say, hey, Ryan, these are the 10 people who are serious about buying our thing. And I'll be like, great, send me those 10, let me talk to them. And that's the whole point of setters and closers. The setters would basically go through the 100 and, and disqualify the 90, and then the closers would get to close the 10 good leads. And that's how it has to work, because closers just don't have the time to go through all the leads. It's not a good use of their time. It's better to go get a couple of people over here so that you know your big dog can go out and close and do what they do best. The next thing you gotta think about are upsells. So we talked about lifetime value of Apple for a little bit, but Upsells are super important with everything you do. So I mentioned that, you know, I don't want somebody to just spend $97 with me once. Like, that's great. But odds are, if we do such a great job fulfilling on that, you're gonna wanna buy more from us. You're gonna be like, yo, I wanna come to the event. Let me get a ticket. Yo, I actually wanna do coaching. Let's do that. You know, we got these things called our wealthy retreats. You know, last year we went to Cabo and Cancun. You're gonna be like, dude, I wanna go to that. Vacation with other entrepreneurs? Let's do it. So you know, or my other businesses. Hey, you know, you want to invest with me? Cool. Let's do some flips together. Let's buy some apartments together. So upsells are very important because guess what? In a business, usually the most expensive thing you can do is customer acquisition. Basically your marketing is usually your biggest expense. So we got to really make sure that not only are we profitable when we sell them whatever we want to sell them, but that we continue to build that lifetime value with a customer by having the right kind of upsells and new offers that we know the customers want. To give you an example, I was talking about the CRM earlier. For years, our students have asked us, Ryan, you know, what CRM should we use? And I would always refer out these different CRMs and I'd be like, just use this, right? And it's not like I'm endorsing, I'm just like, look, we use Salesforce, we use HubSpot, they're super expensive. It's probably not for you. Here's some cheaper options that are like 200 bucks, 300 bucks a month. But eventually, you start to realize, you're like, dude, if I have thousands of students, if I'm selling 
to this point, I'm just being real with you. If I were to sell a thousand wealthy U's a month and they're all gonna ask me about CRMs and stuff, why would I not just create the CRM for them? Because clearly it works for me. Clearly they already trust me, they're getting value. So how many people would also buy a CRM from me? I don't know, but uh, I don't know. But let's say the number's 200 of them. You know, if 200 also buy a CRM, well, that's an extra, you know, 20K a month recurring on top of that. So now we're building an upsell revenue on top of revenue from the core offer. So it's important for your business to think about upsells, okay? Now, let's talk about operations. Now, let me be clear about this, okay? Operations are so important because now that you've sold them, you've got um, basically like your order slash offer fulfillment. You gotta make sure you do a good job. So, you know, if you guys buy Wealthy You, we gotta make sure that it's super seamless, you get instant access. You know, I wanna have someone from my team call you just to make you feel welcome. So we gotta have our fulfillment in place because if fulfillment's good, it's going to make your experience good. You're gonna tell your friends about it. You'll do more business with us, okay? So you gotta make sure fulfillment is good. Now, how do you make fulfillment good? Well, there's a lot of things that go into it, right? I mean, the first thing is people. <laughs> and with uh, people, this is a whole process in itself, right? We gotta hire people the right way, right? We need to build a good culture in our company. You know, we need to build processes for how they're supposed to do their jobs. We need to have organizational charts. We need to build good core values. We need to, you know, basically figure out our comp plans. There's so much that goes into the people side of things because that's really what operations is about at the end of the day. You know, clearly there's also the tech element of it. So a lot of things can be automated, which by the way, we do a lot of our fulfillment automated through our CRM, right? Because you're coming in as a lead into the CRM and then the CRM is then you know labeling you uh, a wealthy university student. The moment you buy, the CRM fires off all these automations to make sure you get in the right place instantly. The emails, the text, it gets assigned to someone on our team so that they can check in with you. Like there's a whole process that plays out you know, when you buy. And so this is back-end stuff that is super important to learn. Now, you know, I don't have enough time in this video. This video is more about you know, the products and how to make sure that you're selling, but I could go in depth for hours on just this stuff. Building culture, core values, comp plans, organizational charts. So if that's something you want me to do, let me know in the comments if that would be helpful to you. I don't know how many people care about this back-end stuff, because truthfully, here's the, here's the honest truth. If you're a solopreneur right now, most of this stuff does not matter. This stuff starts to matter the moment you start to scale and you're growing. Okay, we have 100 employees right now across all my companies. So this stuff matters when you have 100 people because we gotta make sure that we're getting people who've got the same core values as us, who, you know, they, they're in the right seat. They have processes of how to do their jobs. They're good culture fits. They've got good comp plans that's competitive with the market that's pushing them to achieve their best results. And we gotta hire them the right way. We gotta have a great process for recruiting people, for interviewing people and all those things. So um, people become a huge element of operations and of just fulfillment and running your business. And you know, for those of you who don't know, like, like I said, we have lots of different coaching programs. I mean, obviously, I think Wealthy You is like the best way to just test us out, right? But for any of you who are interested in coaching, you wanna learn more, or if you like some free resources, I have some other trainings that um, I can send you in regards to operations, sales, marketing, you know, we got different videos we've, we've created that you guys can go watch. We got different courses and things that we can send you as free resources. You could even get my book as a free resource. So if you want any of those, you could text me right now at 725-444-5244. So this is a marketing strategy, right? This is a new like lead source. You know, basically we have our text hotline. I actually look at the text. Sometimes I respond and sometimes it's my team, but you know, in all honesty, like if you text this number, you can just say, hey, like I need help with my business. Hey, I need help, you know, investing in real estate. Hey, I wanna get better at making content. If you tell us kind of like what you need, then 
we can figure out what to give you, whether it's free, whether it's you know a program that you want to buy into, whether it's wealthy you, we'll just have a conversation with you and help you out, all right? So text that number if you, know, you want to scale. Next thing, finance. As you've made this offer, as you've marketed it, as you've sold it, and as you fulfilled on it, you now have this last step of finance. So the first thing is the P&L, profit and loss. At the end of the day, did you make money, you know? Once you tally up all the numbers, was it worth it? So, I don't know, I'll use a generic example for you. Let's just say you're a masseuse, okay? And you charge 100 bucks for a massage. Well, how much did it cost to get you the customer, right? You do some marketing, I don't know, let's just say it was like $25 in ads to go get the customer. Then, you know, you have a building and a place where you're doing it. Maybe, you know, that's costing you, I don't know, $10 per person. Then you got other overhead and licenses and other stuff. Let's say that's uh, 15 bucks a person. Like, you know, there's all these different costs. So, you know, you go and look at it and you're like, okay, you know, that's basically $50 in cost. I made 50 bucks, you know, net profit. This is somewhat true if you're the one doing the massages. But what happens when you want to scale the business? Now you got to hire other masseuses underneath you. Well, you need more overhead. You need more you know, rooms, you need a bigger place, and then you gotta do more marketing. You're also gonna have to hire out the masseuses, so maybe you're gonna have to pay the masseuse, I don't know what masseuses make, uh, 25 an hour, right? So now, your net profit is really 25 bucks on the $100 massage. And you might be saying, okay, 25% profit margin, that's pretty good. I'd say, okay, that, that, that's not bad. But that's assuming $100 is competitive with the market and that you're able to actually sell that. If you find that, hey man, I'm only able to get $75 for a massage and you start discounting, none of these costs change. So what happens is you're basically 25 grand, or $25 less. So you, you know, you minus 25 now, you make zero dollars. So, you know, in the end, your price matters a lot for your profitability. Now, doesn't mean you gotta drop your price. If you know you need to get 100 bucks to be profitable and hit the numbers you want, or to have a bigger profit margin and maybe sell you know, 125, so now you make $50, you gotta start asking yourself, how can I increase the value without like really changing my cost too much? What other services can I add that don't cost me a ton of money, but can increase the value? For example, I'll just tell you with Wealthy University, you know, I've made the courses. I don't have to make them ever again. Technically, they're free to add in. So if I add in a course, I'm increasing the value of the thing and that's making somebody else want to buy it more even though it doesn't cost me anything. So that's an example of adding value so you can charge more. Now granted, my Wealthy use only 97 bucks. So I could still sell it for 97 without a course, easily. But by adding the course, I'm just adding more and more value to it that it's making it more irresistible. That's what I want you to start thinking about in your business. Instead of just always thinking, oh, I gotta drop my price to get more people. No, I tell our salespeople that all the time. I'm like, guys, don't give discounts. Don't drop the price. Instead, hold firm on the price, but maybe let's figure out how we can give them some more value in whatever it is they're looking for, right? So. You know, it just depends. If somebody's gonna spend $30,000 with us, you know, let's figure out how we can, you know, really give them some more value instead of trying to drop the price because they want to haggle. I mean, let's get real. Somebody willing to spend $30,000, they could try to haggle, but at the end of the day, $28,000 versus $30,000 isn't like, there's not a big difference. It doesn't matter really to them. So the reality is, how do you add more value to get your price? That's what you need to think about. Um, Another thing you need to look at with your financial statements is cash flow. So to me, this is the most important metric. The only way you go out of business is if you run out of cash. <laughs> that is it. You can lose money on the P&L and still be in business. You don't believe me? Well, Tesla, Amazon, Uber, pretty much every big stock comp or every big tech company lost money for many, many years until they reached a certain point of scale and then they became extremely profitable. The only reason they were able to grow while losing money is because they had cash flow. It's not from their products, it was from investors. They were selling stock, they were raising money, so they had enough cash flow to keep growing even though they were losing money on paper. 
For us, I'll say us peasants, us simpletons, I don't have the luxury of losing money, all right? I gotta make money and be profitable every single month, okay? I gotta do that to feed my family, to pay my employees and everything else. I'm sure you do too. So we gotta look at our cash flow and make sure we're not going negative too much because if we start having some negative months, we gotta figure out how to get the cash back so that we can withstand the storm. I'll be honest with you guys, in 2023, you know, that was my hardest year ever in real estate. We had a bunch of losses. I lost millions of dollars on properties that I had bought, uh, the values went down because the interest rates, everything else, there's nothing I can do about it. I ended up selling them all. I took the L, I paid off my investors, I gave them their interest that was due to them, and I had to personally write checks to close many, many deals, okay? It was not fun. I lost a lot of cash flow and the P&L was negative. But I ended up getting cash back so that I could withstand the storm because I did different things. I sold off some rental properties. So even though you know we lost money on a flip, I sell a rental property I bought years ago, and then I get the cash from that to basically replenish the account. Same thing with just having other businesses. I sell a business, you know, we have a big event, something like that, cash flow comes in from another business, helps me withstand the storm of the overall Pineda ecosystem. So, you know, overall, cash flow to me is the most important metric you gotta track because you do not wanna run out of cash. That is the only way you lose money, all right? So cash flow is important. I talked already about this lifetime value. You know, for the real estate people, they look at LTV and they're like, oh, loan to value. No, I'm talking about lifetime value, all right? Lifetime value is so important for what you're doing. You gotta understand what a customer is worth so that you know exactly how much you can spend on your marketing to acquire them, right? I gave you, once again, since we're using Yet Wealthy You as the example, okay? It's 97 bucks the first month. What if I were to find that the average person at Wealthy You stays two years? Like, I don't know, right? It's just started, so I don't have the data. But let's just say it was two years, right? That's almost, for simple numbers, $2,000 in lifetime value on just, you know, if that's all they did was staying with the subscription. But here's the thing, that's not gonna be the case, right? There's gonna be some people that upsell into, you know, events, into higher level coaching, et cetera. And then, you know, there's gonna be people that quit after the first month, that's reality, right? So this number is gonna be somewhere in between. Maybe it might end up being $3,000. I have no idea, to be honest with you. We're gonna find out, but I'll, I'll, you know, maybe a year from now, I'll tell you guys the data of what it ended up being as we get data. But overall, if I know that my lifetime value is 3,000, what if it costs me $100 in marketing to acquire? Would you guys do it? Well, yeah, I mean, if it costs me 100 bucks and I know I'm gonna make $3,000, <laughs> I mean, I think I would do it. That would, that'd be amazing, right? So the question then becomes, I have a different cash flow issue because I don't get the 3,000 immediately. I get it over the span of years. So, you know, basically, I'm gonna get 97 bucks the first month, but it cost me 100. So I'm essentially breaking even that first month. As long as I'm okay breaking even, knowing that in month two, I'm gonna you know, be profitable because I'm gonna get the next 97, then it's all good. I can basically keep replenishing that money and keep acquiring more customers. And then I can use this money from month two and from month three and from month four to keep spending on ads and acquiring more and more customers. So if this actually was true, bro, I will spend money to the moon. Think about it, would you spend a million dollars knowing that you're gonna break even the first month, but the next month you're gonna make a million dollars? And then that same person or all those same people, you're gonna make another million dollars. Like 100% I would be doing that. So, you know, I gotta just understand what is this number and how quickly am I gonna get it back? Because it won't happen in month one. I mean, the golden ghost would be, it's actually only say $50 to acquire somebody, right? The reality is, I don't know where it's gonna fall. Even if it fell at $300, okay? And I knew my lifetime value is 3,000, well, it's still a good deal. It's just the problem is, in month one, I'm gonna be negative $200. So I need cash to withstand that storm. Because in month two, you know, I'm still negative 200 or, you know, $100 now. And then in month three, I broke even. And then month four, I'm finally in the green. So these are things you got to think about from a business perspective on the finance side. And, you know, a term we're really talking about here is called ROAS, return on ad spend. 
essentially this is it, right? Like, sure, in the long run, if it was $300 to acquire the customer and I'm gonna make 3,000, like my lifetime ROAS is 10X, that's great. But my day one ROAS, if it's 300 and I only make 97 bucks, I mean, <laughs> that's 0.3, that's really bad. I mean, ideally, you know, <laughs> I, I wanna be 3X on day one, like that would be my ideal. You know, I wanna spend a dollar right now and then I make $3 right after that. But, you know, in this kind of model where it's low ticket, it's not always the case, but you know, if I'm selling our high ticket coaching and I go spend, you know, let's just say $1000 to acquire somebody, which is very much what has to happen in the high ticket world, but you know, they pay 5000 today, well, that's a 5x ROAS right off the bat. That's amazing. So, you know, at the end of the day, you got to understand your financials. And truthfully, as I said from the beginning, this is what happens. You end up creating the offer, end up going into marketing and testing your offer and, and figuring out what your costs are. Then you start trying to sell it because you're getting feedback from you know the marketplace. Then you got your operations and fulfillment, and then you look at finance. And once you finally get to finance, you decide whether or not your current model makes sense. And if it doesn't, you make the necessary changes. Do we have to change the offer? Do we have to charge more? Do we gotta add more? Do we gotta take out something? Okay, all right, marketing. We did Facebook ads last time. Is that gonna keep working? What was our cost per lead? What was our ROAS? All that stuff. From here, you start listening to the sales team. You start seeing how many customers are auto buying this thing. If they're not, we gotta change the script. We gotta change something to get the sale. And you might have to change the offer if you're not getting sales, by the way. It might not just be a sales team problem. Um, and then fourth, hey, Okay, people are buying it, but they're having confusion. They're not sure what's going on. How do I need to adjust the fulfillment? And once I do all those four things, basically finance is just simply the byproduct of all those adjustments. And so you gotta decide, man, okay, did I hit my profit margin that I was looking for? Is this scaling the way I want it to scale? Can I spend more money on marketing now and blow this thing up to the moon? You know, these are all the questions you gotta ask. So for me, every business I've ever built, every offer I've ever created, it's this process right here. All right, and this is what we teach in our programs at Wealthy Business. Literally, we have coaching calls on offer creation. We have coaching calls on marketing. We have coaching calls on sales. We have coaching calls on ops. We have coaching calls on finance. Everything you need is in there. So here's my advice to you. If you wanna work with us, test us out at Wealthy University. Just go to wealthyuniversity.com, buy the 97 a month, test us out. If we blow you away in value, then you know, let's have a chat about the different coaching programs we have. All right. And so, you know, I want you guys to test us on that. Wealthyuniversity.com, best offer I've ever created, hands down. It's not even close. But, um, anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was valuable to you. I'll see you on the next one. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you later. Peace. I've been inside of crazy homes. I've seen people develop apartment buildings. I've seen people build massive businesses. Most of the people accomplishing these crazy things are normal, everyday people just like you. They just understand how to be more productive. Than you.